if I can help students become amazing, compassionate nurses, it is endless. The possibilities of how many lives I can touch in a positive way, just speechless to how much that touches your heart, to know like, this is why I do what I do, is to make a difference in someone's life. I think you should be able to identify what's your reason. The nurses that don't have a good reason tend not to be as good of nurses. Produced by Podcast Architects. Welcome to Healthcare Calling. I'm Chelsea Reber, and today I'm joined by Shandalyn Smith. She is an adjunct clinical instructor at Blinn. Shandalyn, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And if you're interested in learning more about Blinn's nursing program, make sure to click the link in the description and head out to their website. So Shandalyn, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you ended up at Blinn. Okay. So I am, actually, I ended up at Blinn because this is where I went to nursing school for my associate degree. Um, I have been a nurse for about 15 years and by trade, I'm an oncology nurse. I actually have a specialty certification in oncology nursing. Um, just recently in December, I graduated with my master's degree. So now I can be a grown up instructor at Blinn, which I absolutely love. Um, it was really amazing to get to come back here and actually teach for my alma mater. So you work at Blinn, but you also work at a hospital here in town, correct? So yeah, that's correct. So my full-time job is the clinical nurse educator for, um, three units at St. Joe's here in Bryan. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I work part-time for Blinn as a clinical adjunct instructor. So that's just once a week during the, during the long semesters. Mm -hmm. What made you want to come back to Blinn as an instructor? Well, a big part of that is I didn't even realize that I had a passion for education, but when I was about a year into my nursing, I started getting students from Blend to what we call precept. So mm -hmm. kind of mentor them and train them. And every semester they kept giving me another student. The clinical instructors, the faculty at Blend was amazing because they kept coming back and giving me students. They were like, we like the way you do with the students. We like, you know, you're doing well with them and they appreciate you and so they kept offering to bring me students. And the more I did it, the more I loved it. And so I realized that I not only had a passion for nursing, but I also had a passion for teaching nursing. Mm -hmm. So um, it was amazing, the relationship that I built with my former instructors, as well as some of the new ones. And I just really wanted to be a part of that team. I felt like it was, it was really a neat team. Before you went into academia, what were the first few years of nursing like for you? <sighs> So I started in the oncology unit. That was, I've only ever been a nurse on oncology at St. Joe's and Bryan. So caring for a lot of cancer patients through a lot of their toughest moments, um, it was very humbling to say the least. And it really let me, I am 100% a nurturing, um, my personality is mm -hmm. nurturing. Um, it let me do that and help take care of people in a way that I never even imagined possible. So um, that was, it, it was just amazing. And so I continued with that and I, I stayed there until just about a year ago when I went into the education side of things. I'm always curious to know how nurses became nurses going all the way back mm. to the beginning. What made you realize that this was something you wanted to do with your life? So, you know, when you're a little girl mm -hmm. and you play, you role play with people, right? And some people are teachers and some people are doctors and some people are firemen. Mine was always nurse, mm. always from, from as long back as I can remember, it was always a nurse and that never changed. Now I didn't get to do it as soon as I wanted to in life. I kind of veered off a little bit and went a different direction, but when I had the means and the opportunity... I took it. So I didn't graduate until I was 35 with my associates in nursing and uh, one of the best decisions that I ever made. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to make the transition from patient care into academia? I know we talked a little bit about this and, and getting to go back to blend somewhere mm -hmm. that taught you. And, um, but what made you really realize I can share this knowledge with more than just the people around me in my immediate space? So I think that 100% came from precepting those blend nursing mm -hmm. students. Um, I realized that 
So as a nurse by myself, taking care of patients, I can make a difference in five people's lives per day. And maybe the next day it's the same five, maybe it's a different five. So through the years, that's quite a few people that I can touch. But if I can help students become amazing, compassionate nurses, it is endless. The possibilities of how many lives I can touch in a positive way, in a compassionate way, it, it's, I, I can't even fathom that. And that, that makes me so happy to know that I, my influence um, is having a positive, compassionate effect on people that are taking care of people. Mm-hmm. And it, it will go forever. You mentioned that word compassionate. What makes a compassionate nurse? So I think it's your heart. I think it's how you care for people. It's, it's actually listening to people. It's, it's caring for more than just giving them medications. Here's one of my favorite things to do. Giving a bed bath to someone. It's, that's probably not very comfortable for the person receiving the bed bath. Mm-hmm. That's super weird. It's super impersonal imper- and mm-hmm. they're all up in your personal space, mm-hmm. you know? And so here's what I do. I say, what kind of music do you like? And they'll say country music. Okay. I turn on the country music from whatever era they want, 50s, yeah. <laughs> 60s, 80s, whatever. I turn it on my phone. I have an app on my phone to play music. We turn the music on, I sing, I dance, I do all of the stupid stuff. I make myself look like an idiot Mm -hmm. with these people who are singing also while they're getting their bed bath. And by the time I leave from giving them a bed bath, they have a smile on their face. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they got a bed bath. It's because I helped raise their spirits Mm -hmm. or whatever. I think compassion has a lot to do with that. You try to do what you can to try to take care of the whole person and to to just raise them, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Absolutely. You talked about listening to your patients. Um, and I think, you know, nurses spend so much time with the patients where as a doctor or someone else in the hospital may come in and, you know, read the charts, get the vitals. I'm speaking like I know exactly what I'm talking about. No, that sounds perfect. <laughs> so, but a, but a nurse is there for so much more time of the day. Tell me a little bit more about the importance of truly listening and how that may not be just as obvious as it sounds. Like, well, yeah, listen to what the patient says, but what that really entails and making sure that the patient understands that they're being heard. Yeah, so I think it's very important that we respond to patients when they ask us something or they tell us something. We need to, what's called a closed loop communication, right? You tell me, my stomach is really hurting today. And I'll say, oh, Chelsea, is your stomach hurting? Mm -hmm. You know, um, just to confirm that what you heard is really what they said. Mm -hmm. Um, It can prove to be embarrassing at times if you don't really hear what you think you heard and Mm -hmm. you start to go down a different road than you should have. Um, I've been in a few embarrassing situations (laughs) over something like that because I didn't, maybe I didn't hear them right or whatever. So I think that closed loop communication is very important. And I think that they appreciate that you um, acknowledge what, what they said and they appreciate that you check to make sure that's truly what they did say. Mm -hmm. Is there one patient in your past that really has made a memorable impact on you? So there's quite a few, but one that I can definitely off top of my head. Um, he was my very first patient. I told you I started as a student Mm -hmm. in oncology. Um, he was the very first student that I cared for and he was a brand new cancer diagnosis. And I was there when he got diagnosed. I was there through the first, I think, 11 months. Um, every time he came into the hospital, I, w- I happened to be there and I was taking care of him. And I was there at the beginning of his journey. And I was also there at the end of his journey. Um, and I, I didn't really realize what kind of impact that my care would have. Mm. But I want to say probably 10 years later, his daughter reached out to me on Facebook and she was like, I can't tell you how grateful we are for the care that you gave my dad every single time that Mm -hmm. we came to the hospital. And I mean, that just wows you. You're gee whizzed and just speechless to how much that touches your heart 
to know like, this is why I do what I do is to make a difference in someone's life. Sometimes they're not going to make it. Sometimes they are, but just to know that they, they thought you took care of them. Their family thought you took care of them. It's, it's very heartwarming. Um, and I have another story about that. So I was sitting on my couch the other day. It was Sunday, just a regular day. And I get this text message on my phone and I'm going to read it to you. Okay. Okay. It says, hi, Shandalyn. My name is Linda and you won't remember me, but you cared for my husband, Jim, at the hospital four years ago. Four Mm. years ago. Wow. I've never heard from this lady. Okay. Did you remember though immediately who the patient was? Um, I, I have an idea. Okay. But I'm not totally sure. So, I mean, we see so many patients that some of them really stick out and some of them kind of don't. And you wish you could remember them all. Mm -hmm. Um, It says, you were so extremely kind to give me your cell number way back then, and I happened to run across it today. It made me think of you and the extreme kindness and compassion you showed Jim and me during his time there. I wanted to thank you for the difference... I wanted to thank you for making a difference in our lives and for giving so much of yourself and your heart every single day. I want you to know that it does, all caps, does make a difference. Thanks for making the world a better place. Sweet, sweet girl. From this very grateful heart, shine on. Mm. And that was just out of nowhere. Yeah, out of the blue. I just started crying. Like... (laughs) I was, I was doing good. And then I just started crying. That really, really touched me because I thought I only took care of her, her husband for just a handful of days. Mm -hmm. And here we are four years later. And she remembered, she remembered that. And I think Maya Angelou has a quote out there and I'm not going to directly quote it because I don't remember it exactly, Mm -hmm. but something to the effect of they might not remember your name, but they'll always remember the way you made them feel. Mm Mm-hmm. And the more stories I hear just on this podcast, you're not just impacting the patients, but the families. For sure. You know, everyone around them. Um, And those are the people sometimes you tend to hear from, just like in that Mm -hmm. case. For sure. That's incredible. Um, I want to move on to the program that you run every semester called Progressive Simulation. Can you tell me more about that? So that's something that it's a program that's put on by the Blinn Simulation Director and her staff and the nursing faculty. And it's very cool. What they do is they bring all of the... um, the specialties together, radiology, um, EMS, um, case management, nursing. Uh, I can't think of all of them right now, mm-hmm. but what basically what they do is they set up an ER and it's a, they have patients, they have real life people who are coming in and they have various injuries and they're coming in at various times. Mm-hmm. So we're having to triage them and get them to the right place at the right time and be sure if they need x-rays, they're getting x-rays done. So that's when you call in radiology and all of the different disciplines working together. And they're all students mm-hmm. trying to figure it all out. And it is such a cool thing. Um, it's it's teaching them how to critically think through the situation. It's teaching them how to collaborate with the other disciplines that are there. And um, it's a very interactive, engaging simulation. It's so much fun to watch them just do their thing and um, get a chance to interact with those other disciplines. It's very, very cool. Do you want to learn the five steps that you must take now to prevent attrition in your nursing staff? Make sure to check out the description and click the link to receive our informational sheet. Something else I'm learning about nurses is that there's not necessarily a traditional path into nursing. You've got people who start later in life. You've got people who start right out of you know, high school, college, mm-hmm. at, you know, really, really young. What is your advice to somebody who's maybe considering a nursing degree? And for whatever reason, they just, they're not sure if they're in the right place in life to do so. So I would, I would say, what's your reason why? You've really got to know, is it something that you're just passionate about? That was it for me. I was passionate about it from the time I can remember. So is it a passion that you have? Is what's your reason? Was there a person? You know, maybe maybe you had a parent or a grandparent Mm -hmm. who got ill and you saw a nurse take good care of them. And so now you want to do that for people. So 
I think you should be able to identify what's your reason because we, the nurses that don't have a good reason tend not to be as good of nurses. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, um, so what's your reason? And once you get into nursing school, it's a little tough. It's pretty, um, pretty competitive Mm -hmm. and pretty tough. But once you get in, push through, it's the hardest. My associate degree in nursing was the hardest school I've ever done in my life. And I just mm-hmm. got my master's in December. So my <laughs> bachelor's was a breeze. My master's, pretty close to a breeze compared to that mm-hmm. associate degree nursing. It is tough. But push through. Keep on trucking. It is worth every minute. And it's worth the sweat. It's worth the tears. Just keep doing it. People need you. We all need you out there being good nurses. For somebody who's listening right now, who may be in a situation like you were, they're a nurse and they've been working for however many years, um, and they're thinking about getting into the academia side of things. What would your advice be to somebody in that, who's thinking about that? So I would say test it out in the hospital or wherever your workplace is and um, offer to take a student. Because if you take a student, that's going to put you on the spot. You're going to be able to know you'll get an experience with them. You'll get so many hours or so many shifts with them. And you'll have a good idea of, oh, yeah, I can do this. Or Mm -hmm. I love this. Or, oh, my gosh, I never want to do that again. Um, I think that would be a good way to get your toes a little bit wet without actually diving into the pool. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest challenges of working with students after just being a nurse and kind of working in your own world for so many years? Well, I think that once you have been a nurse for a while, you, you have a way of thinking you've, you've tailored the critical thinking, you know, that you're thinking 10 steps ahead instead of maybe what what is, what happened already. Um, you have to anticipate what's going to happen. You have to, um, prepare for those things that could happen. You know, that if I give this blood pressure medicine, then that could drop this blood pressure. And I need to teach this patient that they, when they're standing up, they might get dizzy, all of these things. So I think it's real important that we understand that it's much more forward thinking. And as an experienced nurse, you you get that with experience and time and just doing the things. Mm-hmm. And so that is really, really something that you want to just groom in these students. Mm-hmm. You have gone through this program as a student and I you have. are now an instructor. I have. In this full program. circle. Yeah, full circle. Mm-hmm. What makes blend nursing so special? I'm going to hundred percent say it's the faculty. I love every single instructor that's here. There's a lot of them that were my instructors that are still here. That's how good they are. They're still here. They're still doing an amazing job. Um, I think it makes a big difference. The approach that you take with students, your, um, how, how you critique them, um, I, I believe everything should be a positive, have a positive tone for the most part. I mean, there might be some times where we're not so much, but, um, if you're giving them positive feedback and constructive criticism, then I think they're more likely to learn from that than like a hand slap or a, you know, mm-hmm. ruler on the hand. Um, and the, the instructors here are amazing at that. They, they are just, they're really great. I can't say enough good things about them. And I can say that because they, a lot of them were my instructors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Shandalyn, thank you so much for joining me today. Is there anything else you want people to know about blend nursing? Mm. Just come to school here. It's amazing. (laughs) I love that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Make sure to check out all the information in the description so you can learn more about Blend's nursing program. And if you want to find out the five steps you must take now to prevent attrition in your nursing staff, check out the link and head to the website. Produced by Podcast Architects.